Okay, so we, I mean, we've got uh, the question of reason, the role of reason in, in science, and are we putting too much faith in them, the question of humanism, and then the distinct contribution of Christianity and the mm -hmm. Christian gospel. So I mean, on, on sort of the question of reason in science, I, I don't think we can have too much reason. I don't think we can have too much science. I think advances in reason, advances in science, better application of, 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 of reason is always uh, ad advantageous. I think that it has led to an extraordinary progression in knowledge. It has contributed enormously to the, you know, the trends that, that um, Steve brought uh, up earlier. Um, so I think this is important. Can we have too much faith in these things? I, I, I think we can. Um, I think if we neglect um, that the, you know, the human person is free and sometimes uses that knowledge for, for, for wrong purposes. If we think that uh, reason and science are going to solve all of our problems, I do think we can have too much faith in them, but not, not too much reason, not too much uh, science uh, per se. Um, you know, with humanism, uh, I, I essentially agree with, 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 with Steve and in, 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 in what he said. I mean, I, I would view Humanism is really any effort to help the human person <laughs> achieve their uh, potential. And um, as noted earlier, and as you know, Steve pointed out as well, there's a lot um, on, on, on which we agree. And so I, I think we should be working together to advancing those goals. Again, to, to my mind, those are not just material goals of, of, of health and longevity and literacy and, and income, but also should be pointing towards the experience of beauty, of, of, of meaning, of trying to be a good person, of, of, of good relationships. Um, and so I think we should be working together to use both, of, both our science and reason and also those humanistic impulses to try to uh, bring that about as, as a society, to work across uh, religious traditions, to work across the religious secular uh, divide, to work with all peoples to, to achieve that. And I, you know, I agree that the, you know, the Declaration of uh, Rights is, is an extraordinary um, accomplishment in that regard, and we should do whatever, whatever we can. Um, I mean, with regard to the, to the distinctive uh, contributions of, 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 of Christianity itself towards um, humanism, towards uh, towards flourishing. I mean, one one might uh, you know point towards the, the the historical contributions, contributions in terms of understanding the the, the equality of peoples or or, or um, charity or the contributions to science. One might point towards the. Um, you know, the, the, the proportion of, 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 of health care in African countries that the churches and other religious organizations are providing, one might point to, um, and this is a topic of some of my own research, the, the contribution of participating in religious community towards health and well-being, lowering depression, suicide, uh, reducing mortality, uh, risk, and divorce, and so on. But, I mean, I think those are, are kind of more uh, uh, historical and, and empirical questions in terms of you know, Christianity's contribution to our understanding of, of humanism, of, of human flourishing. A lot could be said, but I'll perhaps restrict my, my remarks to, to three things. I think, um, first, the centrality of, of, of love, the, the sort of basing, the encapsulating the whole of morality, the whole of ethics as, as essentially love of neighbor and of God. Um, and, and extending that so far as love of enemy as well in, in Jesus' teachings. And I think we're actually in great need of that in, in, in this country, I think with the political polarization um, that, 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 we're, that we're seeing. We need that love of the opponent. We need um, a sense of forgiveness if we really are going to come to, to, together. And so I think um, both the teachings on love, but then the motivations um, to love, you know, examples like the life of, of, of Mother Teresa, who, who gave her, her life caring for others. You know, one, one anecdote is a uh, news re reporter saw her doing her work and said, I, I wouldn't do this for a million dollars. And her response was, neither would I. Um, and you know, what, was, what was motivating her was that love of, 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 of other people. And I think it is a love that's both taught by, 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 by Christianity, um, but also em empowered. Uh, but I think her example points to, you know, I would say, a second contribution of um, Christianity to our understanding of um, true and real humanism, true, true flourishing, which is that of making sense of suffering. Um, what, what do we do uh, when, we, when we suffer? Do we, do, do we ignore this? Is there any uh, value in, in that suffering? 
And again, a lot could be said on, on this topic, but I, and I think there's both the notion of voluntary suffering, suffering for the sake of helping others, of, of loving others, but then there's also kind of trying to make use of and understand the suffering one experiences in one's own life uh, for the purposes of, of transformation, to turn um, one's, um, one's desires, one's will towards the higher goods, and again, from a Christian perspective, ultimately towards God. So I think there's, there's a kind of a second contribution in trying to make sense of and find meaning um, in the midst of suffering, which we really do all encounter. Uh, and then, you know, lastly, and I think this is really the, effectively the heart of, um, of, of Christianity, is that, that attainment um, of that uh, spiritual well, well, well-being, that, that, that communion um, with, with, with God. And again, we could go on and on with regard to the theology um, uh, around this, but, you know, with, with regard to trying to attain that communion, I think there are kind of three central and difficult challenges. One is if you, if you really view that communion as an understanding of, of a vision of, of God, that is beyond uh, our capacity. So how do, we, how do we attain this? This is something that's in some sense uh, superhuman. Um, secondly, how do we reconcile um, our brokenness or imperfectibility, the fact that you know, we do wrong with, with something that is someone that is perfectly good? How, how, how is that reconciled? Um, and then thirdly, it's, it's sort of this, this notion of if, if what is central is, is, is love of God, but love involves freedom, um, how is it <laughs> that we can freely uh, come, come to love? And um, you know, I, I think those, those three problems are addressed within um, Christianity as, as being Jesus Christ's incarnation um, in the world, his, his atonement, his, his death, and, um, and his empowering us. Uh, to, 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 to love, his, his becoming uh, a human person, is uniting himself with human nature. The understanding is that does eventually help us, equip us, give us that supernatural capacity uh, eventually uh, to see God. The, the, the atonement, his, his, his death, the understanding, the theological understanding, um, is that's, that's that the way that um, we, we are reconciled with respect to our own brokenness, our own um, imperfectibility, our, our own wrongdoing, our own guilt, um, and God's, God's perfection. It's, it's, it's that union with Jesus on, on the cross. And then you know, lastly, with, with, with love, it is, it is God's um, helping us, drawing us in um, through, the, through, the, through the life of Jesus and hopefully through the loving um, actions of, 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 of the church. So um, uh, it, it, I think it's, it's sort of, you know, those are in more theological abstract terms. I mean, as, as analogy, one might, one might um, envision a person on a, on a ship who can't swim and the ship is burning. Um, and you know, what, what, are they, what are they to do? Um, can imagine someone else on the ship grabbing the person and who can swim, jumping into the water and helping them uh, swim. Uh, that still requires the cooperation of the, of the individual who, who would otherwise drown or, or burn to death, but in, you know, in some sense that, that pulling one um, off of the, of, of the ship is that deliverance from our, our wrongdoing, that, that, that assistance in, in swimming is what was accomplished by uh, the incarnation, by Jesus as becoming man, uniting human nature to um, himself, and then again, we, we do need that that cooperation, however, to, to swim to the surface, to swim uh, to safety, and, and critically, importantly, part of that learning to swim um, is, in fact, loving others, contributing to their uh, well-being, seeking those common ends of, of of humanism, helping people to obtain uh, their highest material, intellectual, moral, cultural, and and spiritual ends. Um, so I, I do think. Again, from the Christian understanding, there are uh, important and unique contributions uh, that Christianity makes to the notion of human flourishing.